morning, Jubilee Church, and welcome to our time of worship and fellowship this morning in the Word. We're blessed to be together with each and every one of you. Hey, online family, God bless you this morning. I hope you're ready to worship with us because we're stepping in to all that Jesus has for us today. So if you're here in the house this morning, I'm going to ask you to stand while we pray and we receive our call to worship from our shofar. We're going to come and give to the Lord. So I'm going to ask you to lift your hands, but not in a receiving position. I'm going to ask you to lift your hands in a worship position. This morning, we're here to give. We're here to give to the Lord the glory due his name. We're here to give to the Lord honor and strength. We're here to give to the Lord all worship, all praise, all glory for Jesus Christ is worthy. You are worthy of our honor. You are worthy of our praise. You are all glory, all righteousness. You are the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the Prince of peace. Adonai, El Elyon, great I am, all that you are, Lord. We are here to celebrate this morning in your perfect name. Will you receive our worship, our sacrifice of praise? May it be a sweet smelling aroma to your nostrils today. In the name of Yeshua, the Lord Most High. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to you, Lord.
exalt you. Jesus Christ,
on, give him an applause. Let's do something. Yes, Lord. Glory. Praise you, Jesus. Yes. Yeah. You may be seated. We're going to get continue the worship, though, and giving. I want to bring up Psalm 45. We are in the midst of declar declaring five psalms a day. And we're at 45 today. And so next tomorrow will be 46. And I want to read my favorite psalm. But before, I want to give you a good report. We closed the books this week. We started the... Yeah, that was a good report for <laughs> Brian and team. But the, we started in January with a $14,000 deficit year to date. And we ended in the end of... De, or excuse me, in the beginning of December. And we ended the end of December with a 13,000 plus. So that was a gift from heaven. That was God, his faithfulness. And again, I shared last week, you were so generous to the staff and the first fruits offering at the end of the year, $10,000 came in and that was distributed to everyone. And so again, we thank you for that. Also, we are choosing nations. So if you'd like to reach in and pick up the inheritance God has for you to partner with Jesus. Uh, Larry and Melanie will be over there. You can do it during the offering or during the service or after. Well, don't do it while they're praying. That, they, they pray for the nations, and we're excited about that. But I'd like us to declare Psalm 45 because it's my, one of my favorite psalms, and I got to read it this morning. I thought, oh, I like this psalm. This is some descriptive language to the relationship we have with our king and who he is and how powerful he is. And I don't care where you are and what's, what's dogging you. I want you just to declare today, your mighty one is on the throne and, and he is moving. So let us say together, my heart is overflowing with a good theme. I recite my composition concerning the king my tongue is the pen of a ready writer you are fairer than the sons of men think of jesus yes that's who we're talking to grace is poured upon your lips therefore god has blessed you forever gird your sword on your thigh almighty oh one with your glory and your majesty. And in your majesty, ride prosperously because of truth, humility, and righteousness. And your right hand shall teach you awesome things. Your arrows are sharp in the heart of the king's enemies. The people fall under you. Your throne, O oh God, is forever and ever a scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom you love righteousness and hate wickedness therefore God your God has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions all your garments are scented with myrrh and aloes and cassia out of the ivory palaces by which they have made you glad. King's daughters are among your honorable women. At your right hand stands the queen in gold from Oprah. Listen, O oh daughter, consider and incline your ear. Forget your own people also and your father's house. So the king will greatly desire your beauty. Because he is your Lord, worship him. And the daughter of Tyre will come with a gift. And the rich among the people will seek your favor. The royal daughter is all glorious. Her clothing is woven with gold. She shall be brought to the king in robes of many colors. The virgins, her companions who follow her, shall be brought to you with gladness and rejoicing they shall be brought they shall enter the king's palace instead of your fathers shall be your sons whom you shall make princes in all the earth 
I will make your name to be remembered in all generations. Therefore, the people shall praise you forever and ever. Amen. So be it. Lord, now bless our giving. Bless this year. You are our king. We are in love with you. And you are our Lord, so we worship you. We bring to you our tithes and offerings, the first fruit of all our increase. We are grateful for the way you showed yourself faithful to us this last year. Now, Lord God, grant us new grace in our precious lives that we might show ourselves faithful to you again this new year. We praise you. We declare the blessing of heaven opens and pours out upon all your families and all of this house. In Jesus, you are Lord and you are victorious, and you're triumphant. And again, we've got to declare the decree you said to us, we come out of the crisis in health and in wealth. We come out of this crisis in health and in wealth. We come out of this crisis in health and in wealth. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Go ahead. Let's, we can minister in the house and online. And again, you can go grab a nation too. Get your hands clapping with the sound of shofar. We should make a sound ourselves. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. If we'll stand together. Let's go ahead and 
offer this back to our Lord in thanksgiving. Again, it's not just what's in the bucket, it's what's gone digitally, it's what's gone earlier this week, however, whenever you were able to give. We now declare all of this yours. We joyfully, wholeheartedly release it. We thank you that you are our high priest, and there from heaven at the right hand of majesty, our Lord Jesus commands the blessing. We who carry promise, he commands the blessing and blesses us. And we receive your blessing as you receive our tithes and offerings in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Eddie. Larry and Melanie, oh, you're right in the middle of this. Did you want to give a quick announcement about what we're doing with nations? Uh, otherwise, if you're, you're, Melanie's ready. Grab that microphone. Sorry. Yeah, it's so good to have you back. Thank here. you. Oh, bless you. Yeah, blessings. Welcome. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, online family. Good morning, those of you who are here in the house. We are picking nations for the rest of this month. And it's more than just picking a nation. It's really encountering the Lord in what he wants to tell you about your authority in that nation and your inheritance in that nation and the love that he has for you and that nation. So it's an invitation to encounter the Lord and to let him give you a precious gift that's precious in his heart. So we draw by lot <laughs> and we have buckets that are arranged by region. So you can tell us what region you want or if you want to pull randomly, you can just randomly pull in the bucket that the Lord leads you. And for those of you online, if you would like a nation, just enter it into the YouTube chat. Just say, I'd like a nation. And we would be happy to pick one for you and tell you what it is. And we want Pastor Steve to pick a nation. He has to. asked to pick one. So hallelujah. Here we go. Ah, Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka. Hallelujah. Yeah. Oh, that's an awesome, that, that awesome, awesome nation. That flag has the lion. We always proclaim that that's the lion of the tribe of Judah yes. with the sword of the spirit. Yeah. And that is a that's nation good. that's coming with the revival. That's revival right. is coming and the flag is going to be transformed. Yep. And the meaning, the whole trajectory of the nation is going to be drawn up into heaven by Jesus because he loves it. Yeah. He loves yeah. the nations. Hallelujah. Yeah. So bless you all. Bless Thank you. you for those of you who join us. You can join us every week. We do this after service. You can join us over there by the flags in person or online. You can watch live. And we have lots of people watching live and entering in prayer requests. So we honor you all. We bless you. We thank you for joining us in prayer and agreement. And the Lord is always with us. And we, you can watch any time online because the Lord is just re there and ready to receive our prayers at any time. And, if, and, and we're putting on the secret place the, nation, the nations we're praying for that Sunday. So we would love for you to go out and become a part of the prayer over there. Right after service, we go right into the prayer for the nations and want, want you to be a part of this. Hallelujah. So let's stand up, greet one another, and go grab your nation while you're doing it. I want to talk to the people online, and uh, yeah, let's welcome one another. Bless you all. Yeah, grab a nation. Do, do go on our chat and just say, hey, please, you know, your name will be there. We'll give it back. We'll pull one up for you, and then that way you can know. Praying for nations is the inheritance that God gave Jesus when he called him forth as a son. His name is great because it was given to him by inheritance, better than the angels. And in the inheritance came, ask me, and I'll give you the nations for your inheritance. So the inheritance that Jesus has is son who has redeemed us out of every tribe, tongue, people, and nation. When we pick a, when we pick a nation and begin to pray, so I'm going to learn who Sri Lanka is, and I'm going to grow that nation in my heart and faith over that nation. I'll, I'll investigate, turn, learn, and then I'll prophesy and pray. So keep it in your Bible and do it and be a part of that. Praise Jesus. Wow. Thank you, everybody. We're going to go ahead. You can, you can come on in. You can have a seat. We are uh, nations praying. We are, let's see, anything else? S Wednesday, we are doing the five psalms a week. 
a day, excuse me. Find a place, a time, take a psalm, take your five psalms, and you proclaim it. This is the year of praise because the Lord has declared us to be a people that are advancing in praise so that he can bring his ambushes into all the enemy's camp. And so to get, uh, get something in your hands or get something in our heart and our mouth to speak, we do psalm, the first five psalms. I have had the greatest time <laughs> this last week. I've got a special place where the Lord sent me to declare the psalms. And each time I do, I encounter the Lord in it. And so today is Psalms 41 through 45, so plenty of time to still do that. Tomorrow will be 45 through four, 50, 46 through 50, and so on. Every, every day, uh, five Psalms. Wednesdays are still fat, prayer and fasting. Love to encourage you to join us in the sanctuary, uh, to seek the Lord intentionally, and we're humbling our heart. We're intense, we're, we're pursuing to prepare our hearts to believe and receive so that when he says go forward into another, into the next season that's come, we can just say yes and amen and not back away in fear and unbelief. So prayer is really incredibly important right now. And uh, Wednesdays, this Wednesday, besides the testimonies that will come out of the day of prayer, we will go into Hebrews chapter 9. So take, Hebrew, take your uh, Hebrews 9, read it about once a day, twice a day, meditate on it. It is descriptive of the ministry that Jesus accomplished as high priest and how he now currently holds his place before the Father over us and all of the benefits. It talk, we're going to talk about eternal redemption, eternal uh, uh, inheritance. So by meditating it, then when we get into it, it gets even better. Praise the Lord. Okay, uh, let me pray and then we'll figure out where we're going to start. Dear Father, thank you so much for what you are doing in our midst. Thank you forever for the Son. Oh, thank you for you so loved the world that you gave your only begotten Son, the only begotten Son. All the love that it drew, the sacrifice that he became, and now he is the firstborn among many brethren. Oh, what a change took place. From a living soul, the last Adam became the life-giving spirit to whom you called him forth, having exalted him. Death impossibly, it was impossible to hold him. And having exalted him to your right hand, you gave him the promise of the Holy Spirit, which he poured out upon us that we see in here. And you have made him to be both Lord and Messiah, the Christ, the anointed one. Oh, we praise you, Father. And having sworn to him by an oath, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek, our glorious King, Jesus, King of righteousness, King of peace, holding a place over us in the face of God saving us to the uttermost as we come to God through him in your intercession over us. Oh, praise you. Praise you that you would make available for each of us to know you. And none of us could teach each other to know the Lord, for all of us shall know you. All of us shall know you, from the least of us to the greatest. For you are merciful to our unrighteousness and our sin and lawless deeds you remember no more. You are merciful to our unrighteousness and our sin and lawless deeds you remember no more. What a relationship. What a glorious relationship. You provide mercy and forgetfulness, and all we have to bring is our sin. Praise God. Hallelujah. You're better than we could ever expect. You're gracious, gracious, kind, and generous, and prosperous. It's not from us. It's not about us. It's not even for us. It's all about Jesus. It's all from Jesus. And it's all for Jesus. But we're in Jesus. So everything is for us, about us too. Because we're in Christ. Praise you. Praise you. Praise you. Praise you. Praise you. Praise you, Jesus. Forever, forever, forever. Amen. Hebrews chapter 1. I want to take us to the, uh, where we just read in Psalm 45, as the book of Hebrews establishes such a vision. 
I think I'll begin in verse 1, chapter 1, verse 1, and then I jump in the middle, and then I'll take us to Hebrews chapter 2, and we'll look at another psalm we read this week out loud. Why do you read out loud? It's so that you can hear your words being coming out of your mouth, so that you engage your heart, and you say, I receive what I'm reading. That's believing. Believing is receiving truth. It's written truth, whether I understand it, get it, or can perform it, or even remotely under touch it I still just release it and say I agree with this truth once the truth begins to be agreed upon faith will rise it doesn't it's not a it's not faith does not originate from us faith originates from Jesus Christ that's why it's the faith we each have individual faith unto ourselves and before the Lord but faith originates in Jesus Christ and comes from the Lord comes in his name comes out of his word comes by his voice so we just give ourselves opportunity. Like the first four verses, let's just use these for a moment. I love these verses. I spend hours at times just looking upon this because it helps me understand how I am to direct my, my attention and what I'm to behold, and then before long, I start experiencing what I'm beholding. God, who at various times in various ways spoke in time past, to the fathers by or in the prophets has in these last days spoken to us by or in his son father speaks Jesus father speaks his son whom he has appointed heir of all things through whom also he has made the worlds who being the brightness of his glory 2 Corinthians 4, 6 says we can behold the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. And the express image of his person. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And upholding all things by the word of his power, literally gathering all things by the word of his power. He's God's wisdom that he's making known is he's summing up all things into his son, both in heaven and on earth. When he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of majesty on high, having become so much better than the angels, as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. So in the resurrection, ascension, in the coronation, in the seating at the right hand of majesty, having become so much better than the angels, so much stronger. For to which of the angels did he ever say, you are my son, today I have begotten you. I ponder that often because the Lord Jesus, God the Son, who became the Son of Man, who became the offering for sin for all time, once and for all, is called forth out of the abyss by be, being declared son, son, which elevated him above the angels to which he had been subjected below for the suffering of death. And then again, I'll be a father to him and he'll be my son. Now, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1. Oh, no, 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 I can't. First, we got to first see this verse Eight. Jump up to verse 8. This is, we just quoted this. We just declared this. But to the Son. You have to understand, today Jesus is the firstborn of many brethren. He is man, a mediator between God and man. He is the first of a new creation called the life-giving spirit, where we are known as living souls. He's been translated in the, in the new birth, the first of many brethren. And so he carries with him all of what we would know about ourselves, And better yet, he knows all about what we're going through and can make intercession and can come to help and come to our aid. So he's very in touch with us. So to the son, he says, your throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. 
You have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. We wrote, read, you love righteousness and hate lawlessness. In this earth walk, he came forth perfect and was perfected. And in this case, now one of the greatest benefits that he has received, which we can receive because all he has is ours if we step inside. You have, therefore, God, your God has anointed you. Imagine with me, Jesus being anointed. Again, in the, just the, the Holy Spirit impartation, uh, the coronation, the high priest of our confession, the sending forth of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. And what is, what's the statement? With the oil of gladness more than your companions. Jesus is the most joyful man in all of creation. He is so full of joy. So that helps me when I feel from my connectivity to life that we're all living connected to the days of my flesh and I'm overwhelmed. I remember that my, 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 my champion is joyful. So if he tells me to rejoice, I then step into his joy and come, let that joy come back. More than all your companions, more than angels and seraphims and cherubims and everybody. He's the most joyful of God's creation called forth. He's been anointed with the oil of gladness. Gladness is more than joy because it's blithesome. Blithesome means that you are, you are actually ridiculously happy about things that you ought maybe not to be and you're not caring about a bit about what everybody else thinks. It's a powerful word. The Lord, and that's what he did for us. <clears throat> now jump with me over to chapter 2, verse 1. Therefore, we must give an, uh, more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we drift away. Drifting away means that there's a force pushing you in another direction, that unless you pay attention, you lose, a direct, you lose the connection. Isn't that what prayer is? Getting up in the morning? Find the Lord? I wake up in the flesh. I got to get back on the spirit. I'm full of the Holy Spirit, get free, free. So I go looking and I go connecting. And once I've connected salvation, salvation is the same every day. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. His attitude toward humanity is the same. His redemption is still the same. His salvation is the same. His victory is the same. In fact, one of the things the Lord is doing for me right now is so fun. Jesus is. Jesus is salvation. Jesus is salvation because he was the first saved man called out of the abyss. We, he was the first one made alive. And when he was made alive, while we were all caught up in our trespasses, Ephesians 2 says, we were made alive together. So before we even said yes, per, everything had been shifted all we were waiting was for the revelation of Jesus in us to call and say yes. But he was made alive. So Jesus is salvation because he was saved. Jesus is healing because he was healed. On the cross, he bore our sicknesses. He carried away our diseases. Jesus is peace is because he bore our turmoil, our affliction. His soul was poured out unto death. And he was called forth, made whole. When he dies on the cross and says, my God, or he says, not my God, that's when he goes into the three hours of darkness. When he says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He is now submitting himself wholly to the wrath of God, to the judgment of God, to become the sin offering, to come under the curse, to come under everything that was a part of the law, everything that was a part of sin, everything that came as God's wrath had to be turned upon him. For three hours, the world is in utter darkness. You can't see your hand in front of your face. Nothing is recorded because this is God's sovereign judge judging sin. Jesus became sin. He didn't kind of acquaint himself with it. He became it. And then God destroyed it, annihilated it, removed it far from ever. And so when he's in that, that conflict, submitting, God says, I, it's my pleasure to crush you. It's Isaiah 53. And I'll put you, I will, I'll put you to grief 
and I'll make your soul an offering for sin, because it was the soul of Adam that sold out, the soul of Jesus would have to stay in. And then he saw his soul being in travail, and it was pleasurable, because God could say, now is a submitted soul submitted to me to receive the punishment that was just for all mankind to be on one man, for all mankind. And then he goes on, and it says the last verse of chapter of Isaiah 53, he poured out his soul into death. So this Jesus, in, in union with his Father, trusting and now submitting to God his judge, is there before the Lord, and he is now called forth. Psalm 2, the prophetic word. You are my son, today I beget you. On the cross, before he dies, physically, he has already died spiritually, correct? When Adam was told, don't eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, for on the day you eat, you will die. He died the day he ate. His spirit died physically. He has already died spiritually. Correct? When Adam was told, don't eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, for on the day you... And Jesus, who has now laid on, been on a cross naked and put under the shame and reproach of all mankind, calls forth the Son. I've begotten you. You're my Son. Today I've become your Father. So as he referred to himself throughout his earth walk as the son of man, for that's who he identified with, came to be identified with, because he came to be the perfect sacrifice for man, now is called the son of God. He is now pulled out, and he is a new creation. He, 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 he's life-giving spirit. His soul has been redeemed. It's no longer flooding, functioning from the body, the, the who we are, what we're made of, what we feel, what we live, what we experience. is a life-giving spirit. He's, he's, whoa. And so his last words are, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And he, with a loud voice, yields up. He didn't die because the cross killed him. He died because it was necessary to die, and he yielded himself to the Father. Just like Stephen didn't die because the rocks killed him. He said, Father, he said, Lord Jesus, I commit my spirit. We're learning the same lesson Jesus learned, except our lesson is with Jesus, and his was with Father. So this salvation, Jesus is. He's saved on the cross. He's healed on the cross. He's delivered on the cross. If he, he had bore all the sicknesses, all the diseases, everything that's listed in Deuteronomy 28 would have just been on him to carry it away as the curse, yet you can't see a sign of it because he's healed. The only thing that Jesus carried with him out of the grave and out of that experience was the holes in his wrist and the holes in his feet and the spear hole on, the, on his side. And those, oh, those were just to prove he was dead. <laughs> I've, 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 I spent time with the Lord. I asked him, I said, well, why didn't you need inner healing after you came off the cross? I mean, dear God, I mean, that's pretty traumatic. And he said, resurrection life. I was raised from the dead. I was called forth in resurrection life. I was called forth into life. Now, as a first born-again man, I die. He said, well, he had to be born again when he came off the, out of the grave. Well, is that how it's going to work for you? I hope not. You better be born again before you die. From what I've read, first, that's the way in, is to believe on the Lord Jesus and the new birth. And we walk through life. Now we have been given the same opportunity that Jesus lived in fellowship with the Father. We live in fellowship with Jesus. We live in agreement with who he is as he lived in agreement with who he is in the Father. 
But we have a one better in a sense that we can't mess up what we have been given because what we have been given is in Christ. It's just in Christ. So every day I experience life like you do, and we all go through what we're going through, and we all need help. That's why I love this crying out for mercy. Mercy, 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 mercy. I'm expecting mercy. I stay in the love of God by looking for and expecting the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ into eternal life. Rather than the fear that wants to grip me and say, "Uh uh-oh, something bad's going to happen. Uh-oh, we better watch out. Well, no, what's going to happen next? Well, no. I just go, oh boy, something wonderful is coming. The mercy of Jesus is going to be released and I'm going to experience the mercy and carry me into the eternal life. So I'm ready to open the door for mercy as soon as mercy starts to show. It's just a shifting. But it's not because I've got a, a mercy magnet attached to me. Jesus does. I can know all of this because in Christ. So what's been really blessing me is when I'm in a position that I need Jesus, I need his benefits, I need his blessing, I need his help, I declare he is healing. Follow me. Jesus is healing. All healing is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ received all healing because his name, Yeshua, is the passive tense of, of, of present passive tense of receiving healing. The reason I can be healed in a moment is because I'm in Christ and he's receiving healing for eternity. The reason I'm saved in a moment is because Christ has been saved in eternity. He received salvation from the Father. The reason I can come out of all mental torment is because Jesus Christ has come into complete union and communion as the resurrection in, in life. So it, what, I'm, what it's doing for me is it's separating all the steps. It's moving me from law to just focus, to spirit, to allow the Holy Spirit, to worship, to engage, and to enjoy. So this is this Jesus. He's active. He's high priest. He's in our midst today. He supplies the Holy Spirit to us. He works the miracles among us. He's the functional one in by the Holy Spirit, but it's his decisions that he makes. The Holy Spirit only does what Jesus says to do, and he only announces what Jesus says, this is the mind of the Father that I want you to announce today. He does it individually. In fact, this new covenant of the Spirit is so opposite of the law that we can't teach each other what it means to know the Lord anymore. We can't measure relationship to God based on rules and regulations and the closer you are to the you know to the to the to the to the law the more righteous you are because now righteousness is only imputed because we believe the the testimony of the father that he raised his son from the dead and by believing that I'm righteous oh wow wow that was easy and extremely hard Because I actually enjoyed having my own righteousness because nobody could tell me I wasn't. Now I have to accept that I have no righteousness apart from Jesus Christ. There's nothing, and and what I do is not meriting what's coming. It's who he is that merits what's being brought. But again, it focuses me in Jesus. I look at him like, oh, Lord, man, everything. I'm found in you not having my own righteousness, which is from the law. But faith in you. The righteousness which is from God by faith. I have faith in you. I receive righteousness. So what does that do? It nails, it just shuts down the mouth of condemnation, accusation, fear, and trembling. It returns me to where I am in Christ, so I'm not trying to sort everything out and get back to where I want to be so I can start prayer. I'm getting myself right where I'm supposed to be right before I begin. So, This is the great salvation. We must give most earnest heed. It's just Jesus. Jesus is prosperity. Jesus is deliverance. Jesus is joy, gladness. Jesus is. It's it's not like, Lord, I need joy. And then Jesus says, oh, let me talk to the Father and see if your joy allotment has been used up this month. 
Jesus, I need to be healed. Oh, okay, well, wait a sec. Let me see. There's a lot. There's a, we've got a lot in the waiting room. Let's just wait for a minute. Now, there is patience required and all faith and, and hope that keeps us that, that patience that keeps hope alive. But, beloved, what, what, what better? What better to employ our own covenant entrance into Christ? What better for us to individually know that I get to be the recipient of the best and the blessed Jesus Christ in the midst of my own life. I am in Christ and he's in me. And everything that Father has done for him, he does for me. And he is his Yeshua. He is receiving. He is the one who holds the reception. He was a firstborn from the dead, but I was raised with him. He is seated at the right hand of God, but I'm seated with him. So I'm, I'm learning to focus and to experience truth without trying to perform it in the natural. Because once you try to perform God, he kind of backs away usually. Unless he wants to perform himself, then he shows off. But you have to learn the difference. He is who he says he is, whether you see it or don't. And the just will live by faith. And if we pull away from the faith we've been given, he has no pleasure. His soul just kind of goes, oh, bummer. I was expecting to do something incredible. I, I want you to be like my son. And the Jesus is in a p- p- pickle because the mystery of godliness, we, we understand that if we suffer with him, we will reign with him. But if we deny him, he will deny us Because he can't deny himself. So Jesus is in a pickle. He became just like every one of us living today on the planet. Saint, sinner, religious, self-righteous, whoever we are, whatever we are. He became us and walked in the midst of us. The most rejected man the earth has has ever plummeted its rejection against. But the most loved son that had ever walked on the planet. And he held himself in fellowship with Father in the love the Father had for him and the words the Father spoke to him. To the point where he'd say, I only hear what I hear the Father say and I only do what I hear the Father do, what I see the Father do. And I'm just going to stay in the union, but I'm going to live in humanity. And the Father anointed him with the Holy Spirit. And he went about doing good and healed all who were oppressed of the devil. But his his assignment was to die for our sin. But it wouldn't have been possible for him to die for our sin if he sinned. So he stayed in fellowship with the Father, in agreement with the Father, in a willingness to follow the Father to the cross and to become made a sacrifice and to become the wrath of God placed upon him and to become everything. And with faith that all of this would lead to the resurrection. So that's why we live by the faith of the Son of Man. By the faith of the Son of God. We live by his faith. We don't even originate faith. Faith is Jesus. It's on his name. It's actually been given to humanity in the resurrection. So there'll be no excuse when people come and go, well, I didn't understand clearly what meant to be die for your sins. Won't matter. Because the veils are coming off. And soon it'll be apparent that the, the rejection is rejection. I reject you as the, the source of life, and I will refuse the, sa- the sacrifice that was given, and I will not accept it as sufficient for my life. At the same time, multitudes of people in all kinds of carry crazy places whose life we're looking around like, you know, you, dude, you're never going to have a good life. You, you've just got everything working against you. You're never going to get anywhere. They're all of a sudden, the veils are going to be taking off. They're going to turn to Jesus, and they're going to go from this, I can't stand living to, I'm alive, I'm alive, I'm alive. And people are going to go, what, what, what happened? I saw Jesus. I beheld the glorified Christ. And he smiled. And I realized in truth that I am in Christ. And if I'm in Christ, and he's the most glad-filled, anointed, glad man, then I'm going to be the glad man. And you know what it is? He is, he is, and I've got joy, joy, joy down in my heart. It's coming. It's coming. You could be one of them. I don't know. I can't teach you. It's only Jesus. 
Paul said it was when the Father was pleased to reveal the Son. Until then, I was just stupid. But when he revealed his Son, then I immediately disengaged from flesh and blood and began to follow after the call that God had called me and known me from before time began. Oh, so this great salvation in Christ. I'm in Christ. I'm in Christ. Listen, you're in Christ. You say, yeah, but everything else around me isn't as good as it ought to be. We'll bring everything around you into Christ. Drag it with you. If I'm in Jesus, so is my circumstances. If I'm in Jesus, so is my health. If I'm in Jesus, so is my wealth. If I'm in Jesus, so is my family. If I'm in Jesus, so is as far as my faith can collect and gather and bring in. So is my country. And if I'm remitted of sin, I can remit sin. So I receive my sin remitted. I receive the people I love sins remitted. I ask life instead of sin, or death for the sin they're in. As far as my faith can go. Jesus Christ pays for it all. It's all paid for. One man can have enough faith to save a city, a country. But it's not in us. It's in him. It's already been saved. He's already done everything. So this is this great salvation. For if the word that was spoken by the angels, this is the first covenant, proved steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just reward. Oh, I'm going to do it. Okay, Jesus, I will. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which at first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard him? Imagine this man, Jesus, in fellowship with his father, sinless, perfect son of man. Twelve years of age, he gets distracted into his father's business and neglects his parents' caravan. And when they ask, where have you been? How could you do this to us? He said, what? I have to be about my father's business. This one, who then had to step out of his father's practice of carpentry and step into the waters of baptism at Jordan and begin to be proclaim this calling I'm following after the Son of Man. Never, never elevated himself to the Son of God because that wasn't how he was operating. He had to be a man. Because if he wasn't fully us, he wasn't worthy of the sacrifice. If he didn't go through everything we go through and find a way to hear under, that's what obedience is. You learn to hear under what you're going through. Is what I'm going through telling me who I am? Or is who he's speaking to me saying who I am? And what if I can't change where I am? Does that change who I am? Am I known by where I live or who lives in me? Am I defined by where I put my head at night or where my heart's been placed? That's the training for reigning. Every living believer is going through in the days of our flesh, as was he. So he had to start to speak. There's a salvation. There's a salvation. The apostles began to repeat it. The Father got involved in it. God also bearing witness both with signs and wonders, with various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit, according to his own will. There is coming a revelation of Jesus Christ that is not new. It just, in many ways, got lost. Traditions overran, and you know, it focuses, and there is coming the revelation of Jesus Christ. It's going to radically become as simple as anything to change so many things. Those people. Seriously. What's a better testimony than somebody's living a miserable life all of a sudden get happy? What's a better testimony than someone that feels like uh, nothing ever works for me? Start thinking everything's for me in Christ. Because the focus is Jesus Christ. It's not religion. It's not the church. It's not laws. It's not live this way and your life will be better. That's law. It's true. And God will make me live in wonderful ways. But the focus is not me or the work. The focus is him and what was done to him to deal with what I have done so that now in him he can intercede and carry me into all that he is. And my job is to listen. 
coming to back to that, we'll close with this. Very important. Every time I'm in a new season, I start reading the same scriptures to hear a new word because in the new season, this word of God comes alive in a new way. And I just saw something this week. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's see where I can stop from here. For he has not put the world to come of which we speak in subjection to angels, but one testified in a certain place saying, what is man that you are mindful of him or the son of man that you take care of him? So I'm made. You have made him a little lower than the angels. You've crowned him with glory and honor. You set him over the work of your hands. You've put all things in subjection under his feet. For in that you put all things in subjection under him, he left nothing that is not put under him. But, key, last year when Dan Peters got up and said, I, I, I just really got wrapped, convicted. We don't yet see all things put under him. What a couple of years the world's been through, and the church, especially church, has like been humiliated. Because we wanted to see things this way, but we didn't get to see anything the way we thought we should see them. And some of us still get stuck in that. But we don't have to see what things to turn a different way. We see Jesus. We see Jesus. We see Jesus. We see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death. Purpose for his being here. Now he's crowned with glory and honor that he, by the grace of God, might eat up, swallow death over everyone. What's going to happen when we start getting that revelation? He swallowed up death. <laughs> he swallowed up death. He took away trauma. He removed all of the issues that would cripple anybody. Oh, oh, oh. It'll be like a Pentecost again. We won't be the I'm so sad group. It'll be the I'm so glad. So, oh. next thing he learns, he accepts, as the Father said, it was fitting for him, verse 10, for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons, Father's will, Father's dream, Father's dream. I want many sons, willing to give you my only son so I can have many sons. In bringing many sons to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. Let me establish this once and for all, and I'll come back and share it with you next week. Because it's so, anti it's not easy to, suffering is the stuff we go through. Whatever's happened in your life that you don't like, getting up too early, staying up too late, dealing with problems you can't resolve, suffering. How do you get perfect? By hearing the word over you. So Hebrews 5. Though he was a son, yet he learned obedience through the things which he suffered. The word learned obedience means you learned to hear under what God was saying went by what you were going through. You'd learn to come out of the con context of what you're going through to come into the content of who you are under. I am under the sun. I am greatly loved. I'm accepted in the beloved. I am healed in Jesus. I am delivered in Christ. I am victorious in Christ. I am triumphant in Christ. Golly, I'm whatever I need in Christ. And, and you have those moments, and they, when they get in you, you're, 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 you're just something, no, nobody knows what to do with you. Because what do you do with a man that you can't, cha you can't affect their confession by what you put him through? What do you do with a man who has a confession that is honored in heaven by the high priest who's spoken it to him, who will not turn from that confession even though his performance says he's not that? Who will quickly go, whoops, uh, <laughs> you just saw Steve. Guess he's still here. Yeah, I am still here. He likes me as Steve. He's, I am a liability he loves. I don't perform. I don't, I don't bring anything extra except receiving more of him. Then he, I decrease because he's increased. So, for both he who sanctifies, Jesus, and those who are being sanctified, us, are all 
of one. For which reason he, capital H, Jesus, is not ashamed to be called our brethren. Imagine the salvation that Jesus knows that he sees us completely saved. That's why he won't come out of agreement with himself because our salvation is in himself. But he's not just going, oh God, I don't know how many more years I can wait. I'm going to be an old man before we get married. No, he's not like that at all. He's living in eternal receiving of salvation and he's aware that father says, sit down here, son. We're going to go gather all your enemies and put them under your feet. And we're going to gather all of your sons and daughters and your believers and put them in the center of you. And when that is complete, you can hand back the authority I gave you. But until then, we're just going to have to rule with a rod of iron. We're going to have to engage from the place of perfection, not from the place of the problem. So he says, we read this psalm the other day. I will declare your name to my brethren. Jesus, you never know. You might today. Beloved, please, the word of God is truth. The, United, the newspaper is not truth. The TV is not truth. The internet is not truth. The word of God is truth. Now, the more you get into the truth without trying to perform it, just let it paint a picture of who, you, who Jesus is and then whoever Jesus is, that's who I am in. And I'm going to allow him be everything over me. I don't sustain it. I just receive it. It changes everything. Came home the other day. This is another. And I said, Cammie, I believe one of the greatest strategies of Satan is to keep believers out of the Bible. So they only have their thoughts, own thoughts to think. And their own circumstances to live, live over and over again until they go insane. Because they've read enough to know that Jesus is good, glorious, victorious, healer, deliverer. But they can't at all touch it. Because they refuse to touch it in the spirit. They won't submit to the truth because they don't, and not in it enough to recognize it. And so now all they do is have the same thoughts, loopity loops. And it just separates. I, and de- oh, I thought, oh God. It's like reading the Psalms. I, I, I'll stand up there and I'll read five Psalms. And I don't understand. I'm not trying to figure out any of it. I'm just reading it out loud, letting the word come back into my heart through my ears, reading it out loud, letting it come back into my heart and my ears, accepting it as truth, thinking, boy, I really can relate to David. He had a lot of problems. And he had an utter confidence that you would deal with his enemies. Wow, that's good news in the moment. I thank you, God. And so you just, truth, it just finds its way in. So he says, Jesus says, I'm going to declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will sing praise to you. Do you know where that psalm comes out of? Psalm 22, verse 22. The first 21 verses is a physical description of Jesus on the cross. Prophetic declaration through the the prophet King David declaring the, the workings of the cross up into the uh, gambling for his clothes. But then at the end of Psalm verse 21 in the New King James, it says, he answered me. I believe right there when he was called forth, the son made alive a new creation. He was He's still on the cross, and he's all of a sudden changed his entire confession. The first words out of his mouth is, I will declare your name among the brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will sing your praise. Okay. I mean, seriously. I'm, you see, we feel, I feel, if I am to declare Jesus to be who I am enjoying when I'm not physically proving that I have rights to enjoy it or experiencing it at the moment that I'm somehow dishonest. Where it's the farthest truth. When I declare who Jesus is, I'm submitting. I am bowing the knee. Four years ago, Papa taught me that for me, true humility is total submission to God's provision. 
to the supremacy of Jesus Christ. That without submission to the supremacy, the all-sufficiency of Jesus Christ, I have no humility. I'm just trying to react out some idea that I have a part to play. And once I came to that, it started waves and waves and waves and waves and waves and waves. And again, he says, Jesus, I'll put my trust in him. And I am here, am I, and the children you have given me. Go with me, please, to Acts chapter 3. I close with this, because the Lord told me, and I will say what he told me to say. It's good news, don't worry. It's just good news. It's just radical. If you have any question of whether we ought to do what Jesus said, Say what Jesus says and say of Jesus what is said about him and accept who he is and declare what he said as an important part of our faith. Oh, today I pray for me this radically just got, fear of God just came strong into my time. The story is a man at the gate, beautiful. He's, he's been raised 40 years. He's never walked a day in his life, a, a miracle beyond anything because he's immediately leaping, jumping, dancing, singing. And all the people are rushing into the, to the gate beautiful or to now the Solomon's porch looking at Peter and John. How did you do this? Why did you do this? Wow, this is a miracle. He goes, no, it's not from us, not our godliness, not our power. It's the name. It's the name. It's the name. It's the name. If you're living in the worst part of life, just say Jesus' name for the rest of the day. Jesus. 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 And watch what starts to happen. It's salvation in his name. It's healing in his name. And that's what they said. The faith that's upon his name. The faith that comes from him has made this man perfectly whole and complete. And then he says, okay, we're picking it up. Verse 17. You, yet now, brethren, I know that you did this in ignorance, as also your rulers. But those things which God foretold by the mouth of his prophets, that Christ would suffer, he has fulfilled. He has fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so times of refreshing come from the presence of the Lord. That's the fourfold salvation experience that I experience, hopefully, at least 10 to 15 times a day. Because every time I do, I get to that pre refreshing point. And I like the refreshing part. It's like I come back in calibration. Yeah, that's, woo! But so I'm looking for, every time, I'm looking for my next repentance. The next chance to think a thought I've not thought before, or to think a thought that I forgot that's true, but I let go, that's repentance. <gasps> and then to convert. Woo, I want in, I want in. Burning bush, there must be something there for me at the burning bush. I turn, return. And then what happens? The blotting, the remitting of sin. Wow. Whatever it was, was telling me, I'm, I'm threatening me. I'm going to take you down. I'm going to take your bones. I'm going to eat you up. Blah, 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 blah. All of a sudden, it just shuts up. I don't know how it shuts up. It just shuts up. The accuser, you stop him, you remove him. You stop the accusation, you remove him. As long as he traffics an accusation. That's why if accusation goes through your head towards someone else, you're trafficking him. Second heaven just keeps lo loaded up with trafficking of accusations until the body will mature. We'll say, none of that. All are accepted in the beloved by the blood of the Lamb. There is none that are made unrighteous by their actions. They're only made righteous by their believing. They believe. They're trusting. They may be behaving immaturely. They may be stuck in fleshly habits. And they may be caught in carnal, natural thinking. But they are accepted in the beloved. And he's not ashamed to call every believer his brother. And I am not ashamed to call my brother brother too. And so we're saying we're only here because of the blood of the Lamb. We're only here because of the blood of the Lamb. And our testimony is what we've heard Jesus say. Jesus says we are in Christ. The Word of God says that we have been made alive together with Him, raised together with Him, seated together with Him. So I will only say what I'm hearing Jesus say. 
And then lastly, if I die, I die. Whatever. What's the matter? So, this Jesus, that repent, new thought, convert, return, respond, blotted out sin, experience. Whoop, that one doesn't matter anymore. Woohoo, ha ha. Conscience free of dead work, conscience free, sprinkled heart, sprinkled from an evil conscience. I, I did a bad thing, but I'm loved. I repent of what I did, and I've turned away from it, but I'm not carrying the shame of it or the blame of it. I'm going to go forward into Jesus, get, up, get distract, detached from that, and back in touch with him. He says, then the refreshing comes. Oh, the refreshing, the refreshing, the refreshing. Now, here's, our, here's where we are in the living body of Jesus. And verse 20, that he may send Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ does not return because it gets so bad on earth, he's got to save us. He did that once. Jesus returns when the restoration of things have taken place, which I have a big feeling is we are the body in agreement with the head. And enamored in trust. So he says, he may send Jesus who was preached to you before whom heaven must receive until the times of restoration of all things. So he has to stay in heaven. Sit there, my son. I'm going to put your enemies under your feet. I'm going to sum everything up inside of you. You stay there. Which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. For Moses truly said, this is what, now, this is what, whoa. Moses truly said to the fathers, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brethren. This is what came out, just, just flooded into my being. Him you shall hear. My sheep hear my voice, Jesus said, and I know you, and you follow me. You're led by the Spirit, but you're following me. My sheep hear my voice. I know them. I know you. Him you will hear. Him you shall hear in all things, whatever he says to you. So that put me into a whole listening mode. What are you saying? What are you saying? And the conversation steps up a whole other level because now he starts talking to me as an attentive son that's coming under the words and ready to hear new things. And it shall be who every soul. This is a prophecy from Moses. It shall be that every soul who will not hear that prophet will be utterly destroyed from among his people. So the salvation to the uttermost is dependent upon my listening to the continuance, to continue, you know, listening to his voice. Let him, his intercession intercept. Oh, beloved. Seriously? Your problem isn't outside and your answer isn't outside. It's just an alignment issue, an acceptance of truth, a reception, repentance. Harry, oh, yes, and all the prophets from Samuel and those who followed, many have spoken and also foretold these days. And you are the sons of the prophets of the covenant which God made to our fathers, saying to Abraham, and in your seed all families of the earth shall be blessed. To you first, now I think, oh, I'm in on this, Lord. I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. To you first, God has raised up his servant Jesus, sent him to bless you. Ooh, in turning every one of you from your iniquities. Iniquities is the willfulness of man. It's the I will. It's what Satan conceived in his illegitimacy. I will, I will, I will, I will. And it's shown up anytime we're on a I need, I need, I need, I will, I will, I will. So Jesus says, no, don't turn, don't turn, turn from that. The willfulness. Just turn to me. Just keep turning to me. And, he, and every time we turn to him, we're free from our iniquities. And a blessing comes. Think of how many blessings are waiting for us this week. And I, will, it, I think how many beautiful things that we've never yet seen are waiting for us to see. Because they're in Jesus. And he's just going to say, come on. You know what? Don't. You've got issues there. You've got some strong feelings. I can tell. 
You've got some opinions that I, I can see you have nurtured for a long time. But why don't you just leave all that and follow me? And you get those moments. And you go, well, why not? I haven't got anywhere with my opinions. My emotions haven't done anything but cause me pain. Why don't I just walk away from that and walk into you? Oh, there you are. The resurrected glad man. Victorious, triumphant son. Oh, praise the Lord. Let's, let's stand together. This was the part the Lord wanted me to say today. Him you shall hear. Not me. Not your favorite teacher. Not the news feed you enjoy most. Jesus, you shall hear. In turning every one of us from our iniquities into blessing. To self-will, self-me, me. I go, hmm. I'll let go of me and lay, lay hold of you. Every day I look for to repent. Be caught. See what I haven't seen, hear what I hadn't heard, think a thought I've never thought, or return to a thought I'd forgot. I believe it begins at something we volitionally can begin. We can't necessarily produce it. God has to grant us repentance. But we can desire it. If what we think is hindering our receiving who Jesus is, don't we want to think differently? And if we can't con concoct a new thought, we can return to the living word and let the word tell us who he is and experience him there. If you'd like to repent, just say, Lord, I want to repent. I really want to repent. I want to step into repentance, a fresh wave of repentance. I want to experience what you are saying. Oh, I want to return to you. I want to return. I want to convert out of whatever place you deem is unprofitable for you. It's not about me. It's about you. I want to return. I want to convert. Just tell them, you, you, I can't do it for us, but I can, I do it for me. Lord, me first. You know it's my prayer, me first. I'm so ready to see what I've never seen before, hear what I've never heard. I'm so ready to be so undone until I can't get up, into, but into a new thing. Jesus. Now comes the blotting of sin, the remission. It's what it literally means. It goes to the source of the origin of the diversion, of the destruction. And it's blotted out, like wiping the tears from our eyes. I receive you blotting out my sins. You say, well, what does that mean? It means that he sprinkles in real time his blood to a real memory that's really bothering us and settling us off course. And he takes its sting off of us, sprinkles our conscience clean, and washes us with the water of the word. Whoa. Say, I receive your blood cleansing me. I receive it's the, that which speaks better. I receive the acceptance that your blood has given me forever. Redemption in your blood, forgiveness of sin. I receive, I receive redemption from your blood, forgiveness of sin. I receive, oh, you can drink it. I mean, the, this stuff just doesn't go down. It, I mean, go away. It's just more and more and more and more of forgiveness. Merciful to our unrighteousness and sin and lawless deeds. He remembers no more.
because sometimes we have to begin with ourself. I open my eyes, Lord. Spirit would confirm that Jesus is intentional on meeting with us individually as well as collectively this week again and again and again and if any of us are willing any of us are thirsty and we hear his voice calling us come if you're thirsty drink and if you believe out of your heart will flow rivers of living water he who walks among us, supplying the Spirit of God, He will pour out the Spirit of God on a fresh new way in our lives. Rivers will begin to flow. Joy will begin to re resurrect. Peace will begin to encompass us. And we will turn from our wicked ways, our iniquities, our willful thoughts, and return to you and receive blessings. You can tell the Lord if that sounds good to you. If you're hearing the Spirit on that, then say, yes, Lord, do it for me. I want, I want in, I want in. I want to encounter you in this new season that we're in. Whoa. To reach out and touch. Scripture says he's not ashamed to call us his brethren. We're not ashamed to call him our brother, are we? Jesus. Say his name. Jesus. Our salvation. Healing. Deliverance. Jesus. Say his name. Say his name. Jesus. Say his name. Jesus. Salvation. Healing. Deliverance. Jesus. Jesus. 